Geekbuying reached out to me if I want to review any of their product they sell. For sure I could not resist, so I immediately started looking at their website. And I selected something I wanted to have since a long time. And this is a laser cutter or engraver. At the end Geekbuying offered me a Scalpfan S30 5W diode laser, which is the basic model of the S30 series. It's important to mention that this video is not a sponsor video, although Geekbuying sent this laser cutter for me free of charge, but I am allowed to share my honest opinion. So at first let's see some technical spec about this laser cutter, so I will jump to the Geekbuying website for the details. So this is the listing of the SCAF and S35 watt laser engraver or cutter. At the time of filming on May 2023, it cost roughly $265, which is I think a good deal. Going down to some of the details, I think the first picture there's a lot of important information about this product, which differentiates this from most other cheap laser cutters. For example, it, it comes with a linear rail on the x-axis, which helps a lot in engraving operations. It comes out of the box with air assist, which is super important. And it's quite uncommon to have this case of basic models like this one. And it comes with limit switches on the x and y axis, which helps you in easier positioning or repeating cuts or engraving and so on and so on. You just press auto home and it will hit the end switches and it will go back to the exact same position each and every time. It comes with a 32-bit mainboard, which directly turns on and off the air assist, so you do not have to do this manually. You can do this in software. You will get a spare lens for the laser with some O-rings. The laser beam itself is 60 times 60 micrometer, which is quite decent for such an operation. Out of the box, it's roughly 400 by 400 millimeter work area, but honestly speaking, if you install the end stops, it will go down to roughly 380 to 380 millimeter, but you can buy expansion kits. For example, there is the cheaper one, the Y-axis expansion kit, which is basically only the two uh, Y rails that you have to replace and longer belts and cables. And you can buy them slightly more expensive upgrade for both the X and Y axis. Then you will have roughly a 900 by 900 millimeter work area, which is pretty decent. Scalpan claims that the basic version, so what I am testing now, the 5 watt version is able to cut with one pass 5 mm balsa wood or 3 mm thick plywood, which is pretty decent. And for example, in building RC planes from balsa wood or plywood, this is more than enough. For sure, we will check all these during the testing period. The S30 series also has the Pro version, which is 10 watt, and the Pro Max version, which is 20 watt, which is already able to cut in one single pass 15 mm thick balsa wood and 10 mm plywood, which is pretty decent to be honest. One additional upgrade I would definitely recommend to, to buy is the honeycomb panel, which is 400 by 400 mm, and this will help a lot in the effectiveness of the air assist. So enough from the tech bevels, let's get to build and let's get to testing. As for the packaging, I can tell that it came pretty nicely. Everything is covered with this kind of foam. Then each and every of these components are also in this foam in multiple layers. It came with a nice assembly instruction, which is, I already checked and it looks pretty decent to be honest. It came with three layers of 3 mm plywood and the rest of the components are all really nicely laid down in this foam packaging. I'm pretty impressed with it. Okay, so the next step is putting this together, but I will not waste your time showing this how to put it together. If you go to Scalpfan's YouTube channel, you can see a quite detailed and pretty nice build instruction for this. Setting up the focus manually is pretty simple. You have to use the 50 mm long bar which was provided with the, with the engraver. You just have to loosen the two thumb screws on the rear of the head. You put the aluminum bar onto the workpiece and then you slide down the head onto the top of the aluminum bar. You tighten the thumb screws at the rear and you are done. 
I use LightBurner as a control X software for this laser engraver. It's not free, but it's it's one of the most powerful softwares out there. It has a nice built-in material test generator. With the help of this inbuilt tool, you can set different variables. One variable is the speed, the other variable is the laser power, and then you define a grid. The software is automatically changing the, the speed and the laser power step by step. And with this, you can really figure out right cutting and engraving parameter for each and every material and each and every thicknesses and so on and so on. And before you hit start, with the reason that this is open frame machine, it's super important to wear safety goggles. So this was the first cut with the machine. Speed, speed from 200 to 900 mm per minute over from 40 to 100 percent and one single pass and as you can see from 70 to 100 percent with 200 millimeter per minute the machine was able to cut through the three millimeter plywood which is quite good and then flipping over the board you can see that it's quite smoky because the air assist was turned off in the first experiment so altogether I made four experiments on this 3mm plywood. The first you already saw, the second one was the same like the first one but in the lower speed range. The third one was already with two passes. All the first three were without air assist and now you can see the fourth one which is already air assist turned on. And you will see that it cuts way nicer, way cleaner without any smoke. So I would say the cutting power in the fourth experiment is roughly the same like with the third one with two passes with air assist on and off because it cuts through the exact, with the exact same speeds and with the exact same powers. The real difference is when I flip over the board and you will see and as you can see the one which was cut it with air assist on looks a lot cleaner. In this experiment the air assist was turned off because it does not help engraving. And for my eyes the best looking speed versus power combo is around 3000 to 3500 mm per minute and 50% which is quite quick and quite decent. As the next step I also tried to cut foam which was basically the packaging of the engraver. It's roughly 10 mm thick black foam. And as you can see, it cuts through really easily and nicely. And then I thought, let's step up the game. I found some 10 mm thick pine wood. I set live burn to 300 mm per minute and eight passes, air assist on, and look at the results. It cuts through like butter and the cut is super clean. I'm quite impressed with this. Then I wanted to do something useful. So I searched online and I found a, an online finger joint box generator, which is quite cool. It's called boxes.python. 
It's a Python script and you can use it free of charge. I designed this box and I cut it out and it turned out pretty nice at the end. I needed some hammering to put it together but at the end it fits pretty nice. And then at the end, one of my friend asked me if I could make her a sign for her YouTube channel. I designed her logo, cut it out from 3mm plywood, glued it onto a white MDF plate, and it turned out amazing. I'm pretty pleased with it. And at the end, I would like to wrap up my opinion about this little machine, like pros and cons, based on my two weeks of experience with this little nice machine. As for the pros, it com comes with an old aluminium extrusion frame, so it's quite rigid for this application, definitely. It comes with a linear rail, which is a huge plus. And then reliability, I did not have any issues at all. No connectivity issues, nothing. I just turn it on and it works. Auto air assist. It comes with this little pump out of the box which is a huge plus. It's super important case of cutting jobs. And then the cutting power is good enough for most of the people. For non-commercial purposes, this is definitely good enough. If you just want to cut thin plywood cheese, like this and this, it's three millimeter thin plywood, or you can even cut 10 millimeter thick pine wood with this, with multiple pluses. If time is not a problem for you, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine. You can make pretty nice projects with this one. I also have a lot of ideas for the future for this little device. For sure it's super important to do not compare $260 unit to 2 to 5,000 euro CO2 lasers, 60 watt CO2 lasers, because this is simply not in the same range, not in the same price range, and for sure you should not have the exact same expectations. But as I told, if you are a hobbyist, I think this is definitely good enough. And then it comes with end stops, which is pretty uncommon in case of such cheap devices. It works really well. It's a huge plus for me. And then upgradability. You can buy Y and also X carriage extensions. Then you can make it like 900 by 900 millimeter. And then you can buy an enclosure to make it safer and to, to suck out, for example, the smoke from the enclosure itself. You can buy a rotary axis if you want to engrave round objects, for example. And you can buy replacement lenses for the laser to, to increase the useful life of the device. And then cons. For sure we also have to talk about cons because this is definitely not a perfect device. It's a cheap device, but it's for sure not perfect. One of the biggest thing I am missing is connectivity. You only have at the moment the USB connection. It works absolutely reliable, but I would really prefer to have a wireless option, like a Wi-Fi or something like this. Although as I saw on the website, you can buy a Bluetooth module as, a, as an upgrade. So most probably this could be solved, but it's, it does not come out of the box with such option. And then another con for me is the manual focus setting. So you have to keep always at hand this 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter long aluminium bar. You have to put it underneath the device, the laser head, then set the focus, set the height accordingly. Scalpfam could have developed something like, like just a leg, a foldable leg on the side of the discover, for example. Then you just fold it down onto the top of the work surface, and then you set the height and you are done. And you just fold it back up. And then the last one for me is wire management. To be honest, I spent at least 20 minutes with wire management and it's still not perfect. So, especially on the y-axis, you have the pump, the pump is connected to the, to the controller and then the x-gentry is connected to the, con to the controller with the air hose, with the, all the wires and when it's moving around, it's, 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 just, it's just loose. You cannot fix it anywhere because the gentry is moving back and forth. 
I think something like a cable chain could solve all this issue and make this way, way better. So basically that's all from my side. And then as a final verdict, would I recommend this tool to anyone? And the answer is definitely yes. Honestly speaking, I'm pretty happy with this device, with this laser cutter. And with this pri price point, I think it's hard to beat. I would definitely recommend this to anyone who wants to have an affordable beginner laser cutter or engravers. If you want to have higher speeds or you want to cut thicker materials, you can go for the other models, the, the 10 watt, the 20 watt models, or already the ultra models are out up to 33 watts. So you can find all this on, on the Geek Buying website. I will put a link to all these in the video description below. And I hope you found this, this review helpful. If yes, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.